In this video, we'll solve inequalities involving polynomials, like this one, and inequalities involving rational expressions, like this one. Let's start with a simple example, maybe a deceptively simple example. If you see the inequality x squared is less than 4, you might be very tempted to take the square root of both sides and get something like x is less than 2 as your answer. But in fact, that doesn't work. To see why it's not correct, consider the x value of negative 10. Negative 10 satisfies the inequality x is less than 2, since negative 10 is less than 2, but it doesn't satisfy the inequality x squared is less than 4, since negative 10 squared is 100, which is not less than 4. So these two inequalities are not the same, and it doesn't work to solve a quadratic inequality just to take the square root of both sides. You might be thinking part of why this reasoning is wrong is we've ignored the negative 2 option, right? If we had the equation x squared equals 4, then x equals 2 would just be one option, x equals negative 2 would be another solution. So somehow our solution to this inequality should take this into account. In fact, a good way to solve an inequality involving x squareds or higher power terms is to solve the associated equation first. But before we even do that, I like to pull everything over to one side so that my inequality has zero on the other side. So for our equation, I'll subtract 4 from both sides to get x squared minus 4 is less than zero. Now I'm going to actually solve the associated equation x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. I can do this by factoring to x minus 2 times x plus 2 is equal to 0. And I'll set my factors equal to 0, and I get x equals 2 and x equals minus 2. Now I'm going to plot the solutions to my equation on the number line. So I write down negative 2 and 2. Those are the places where my expression x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. Since I want to find where x squared minus 4 is less than 0, I want to know where this expression x squared minus 4 is positive or negative. A good way to find that out is to plug in test values. So first I'll plug in a test value in this area of the number line, something less than negative 2, say x equals negative 3. If I plug in negative 3 into x squared minus 4, I get negative 3 squared minus 4 which is 9 minus 4, which is 5. That's a positive number. So at negative 3, the expression x squared minus 4 is positive. And in fact, everywhere on this region of the number line, my expression is going to be positive, because it can't jump from positive to negative without going through a place where it's 0. I can figure out whether x squared minus 4 is positive or negative on this region and on this region of the number line by plugging in test values similarly. A value to plug in between negative 2 and 2, a nice value is x equals 0. 0 squared minus 4, that's negative 4, a negative number. So I know that my expression x squared minus 4 is negative on this whole interval. Finally, I can plug in something like x equals 10, something bigger than 2, and I get 10 squared minus 4. Without even computing that, I can tell that that's going to be a positive number, and that's all that's important. Again, since I want x squared minus 4 to be less than 0, I'm looking for the places on this number line where I'm getting negatives. So I'll shade that in on my number line. It's in here, not including the endpoints, because the endpoints are where my expression x squared minus 4 is equal to 0, and I want it strictly less than 0. I can write my answer as an inequality, negative 2 is less than x is less than 2, or an interval notation as soft bracket negative 2 to soft bracket. Our next example we can solve similarly. First, we'll move everything to one side so that our inequality is x cubed minus 5x squared minus 6x is greater than or equal to 0. Next, we'll solve the associated equation by factoring. So first I'll write down the equation. Now I'll factor out an x. And now I'll factor the quadratic. 
So the solutions to my equation are x equals 0, x equals 6, and x equals negative 1. I'll write the solutions to the equation on the number line. So that's negative 1, 0, and 6. That's where my expression x times x minus 6 times x plus 1 is equal to 0. But I want to find where it's greater than or equal to 0. So again, I can use test values. I can plug in, for example, x equals negative 2, either to this version of the expression or to this factored version. Since I only care whether my answer is positive or negative, it's sometimes easier to use the factored version. For example, when x is negative 2, this factor is negative. But this factor, x minus 6, is also negative when I plug in negative 2 for x. Finally, x plus 1, when I plug in negative 2 for x, that's negative 1, that's also negative. And a negative times a negative times a negative gives me a negative number. If I plug in something between negative 1 and 0, say x equals negative 1 half, then I'm going to get a negative for this factor, a negative for this factor, but a positive for this third factor. Negative times negative times positive gives me a positive. For a test value between 0 and 6, let's try x equals 1. Now I'll get a positive for this factor, a negative for this factor, and a positive for this factor. A positive times a negative times a positive gives me a negative. Finally, for a test value bigger than 6, we could use, say, x equals 100. That's going to give me positive, positive, positive. So my product will be positive. Since I want values where my expression is greater than or equal to 0, I want the places where it equals 0 and the places where it's positive. So my final answer will be close bracket negative 1 to 0, close bracket union, close bracket 6 to infinity. As our final example, let's consider the rational inequality x squared plus 6x plus 9 divided by x minus 1 is less than or equal to 0. Although it might be tempting to clear the denominator and multiply both sides by x minus 1, it's dangerous to do that because x minus 1 could be a positive number, but it could also be a negative number. And when you multiply both sides by a negative number, you have to reverse the inequality. Although it's possible to solve the inequality this way by thinking of cases where x minus 1 is less than 0 or bigger than 0, I think it's much easier just to solve the same way as we did before. So we'll start by rewriting so that we move all terms to the left and have 0 on the right. Well, that's already true. So the next step would be to solve the associated equation. That is, x squared plus 6x plus 9 over x minus 1 is equal to 0. That would be where the numerator is 0, x squared plus 6x plus 9 is equal to 0, so where x plus 3 squared is 0, or x equals negative 3. There's one extra step we have to do for rational expressions, and that's we need to find where the expression does not exist. That is, let's find where the denominator is 0, and that's at x equals 1. I'll put all those numbers on the number line the places where my rational expression is equal to 0, and the place where my rational expression doesn't exist. Then I can start in with test values. For example, x equals minus 4, 0, and 2 work. If I plug those values into this expression here, I get a negative answer, a negative answer, and a positive answer. The reason I need to conclude the values on my number line where my denominator 0 is because I can, my expression can switch from negative to positive by passing through a place where my rational expression doesn't exist, as well as passing by passing through a, through a place where my rational expression is equal to 0. Now I'm looking for where my original expression was less than or equal to 0, so that means I want the places on the number line where my expression is equal to 0, 
and also the places where it's negative. So my final answer is x is less than 1, or an interval notation, negative infinity to 1. In this video, we solved polynomial and rational inequalities by making a number line and using test values to make a sign chart.